Happy Saturday, YouTube. SKS here. We are in full hipster mode right now for something I'm going to call Saturdays with SKS. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to start getting things in a little bit more schedule-y type thing. I know 2020 is the worst year to do that, but we're going to try to do it anyway. Um, what I'm wanting to do is kind of put some organization with the channel. Uh, it seems like we've got things on Twitch all set up and we're good to go. We stream four nights a week. You know, we do sometimes Friday. We do Saturday and Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and that's went really well. What's been the big change, though, is working from home. And I think that's going to be here for a while, if not permanent. And the next thing that's going to happen is or what did happen was I've got a new program to edit stuff. I'm using DaVinci Resolve to edit and transition all my videos and stuff. And I started using it with NCAA. That's what I was waiting on. That was the delay for that. And it's an amazing program. It really works well. And I was amazed how I could queue up things. And then I just leave my computer on all night and it renders everything and I'm good to go. So that's going to be a big game changer. So, like I said, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to start vlogging again. A lot of people asked about that, and today I got something really special to share with you all. It's something that I found it, and I didn't even... I opened it, and I closed it immediately and said, I want to share that with everybody, because it's like going down history's past. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. But before that, I just wanted to talk about like the new schedule and what I'm going with. I'm so professional. I wrote things down and all that. And I know you could tell <laughs> I had two goals this year for 2020. The first goal was to get a vlogging camera. You could tell by this amazing epic quality that didn't happen. It's like going up to the gas pump and you're wanting to put premium in, but then you look at your vehicle and you're like, not a premium ride. That's what we got here with this uh, amazing Logitech webcam. You know what? I can't stand these. Anymore. All right. I'm going to support the Ravens because it's cold. It's like getting down in the 30s tonight here. We got a, we got a frost freezing advisory here in Kentucky. It's ridiculous. Also got tons of color and lots of like weird shapes in the background. So I thought I would throw just a little bit of everything. Look at this professional mic that's like in the way and all that, you know, and like the hipster cap and I wore a shirt. Maybe there's pants on. I don't know. But anyways, just to kind of go over what the schedule is going to be like Sunday through Saturday or what I'm hoping to build it up to. Um, Sundays, I'm going to probably take off. If not, Sunday's going to be a day where I throw up... Uh, some videos that maybe have been left in queue that I want to catch up on. Like I've recently, y'all have noticed that No Man's Sky has started. I just started recording on that and recording and recording. And I've got like 18 episodes already. And I've got two up. So I want to pace those off and be a certain day of the week. But then it's like, Sometimes I just want y'all to have more episodes. So Sunday's going to be like that dump day, but if not, nothing will be posted on that day. Tomodachi Life, still running with that. That's going to be on Mondays. Tuesday is going to be NCAA 14 day. So we've got the season going. Coach Conquest running strong. So Tuesday's definitely going to be a sports day. Speaking of sports, on Wednesday, we're going to go with PGA 2K21. Now on stream... We did the Corn Ferry Tour. We, we made it through Q School. We got our card. And then while I was streaming, we didn't do too well that first season in the PGA. But I've noticed that when I'm recording um, and not streaming, I play a lot better. And I think it's like the delay that goes from the game through the streaming software and stuff. So I think recording may do the same thing a little bit. But when I was testing it, I didn't see an error. And I was playing really well. I was shooting under par on that hard difficulty and everything. So I'm going to do that and, you know, start uploading those normally. Because, again, I'm really wanting to play games that I enjoy. That's why we got Tomodachi Life, NCAA, PGA. Thursdays is going to be No Man's Sky. Friday, I'm thinking of a game. I think I want to make, like, Fridays like a builder game. So there's Foundations that's out. We have... Universe Sim that's getting big updates. Uh, there's there's other games that are out there, but I think I want to go down that route. And then obviously on Saturdays, I want to do Saturdays with SKS, which is what this is. Um, now, it's not going to be every Saturday, but because I want to use Saturday mornings to edit and then do yard work and family stuff and all that. Um, but, you know, on days like this when it's something special where, look at this. I went home and got a lot of my gaming stuff since, you know, I got a house now and all this and I can do this. This is how old this is. 
they don't even use this priority mail sticker anymore, I don't think. Or if they do, you know what? This one's old. Um, this is how old it is. Let me see if I can get you all to see this. It says Lego. I ordered Legos as a kid and put this is what whatever the set was. And I kept this. And there's even like some writing on the front. If you can figure out what game this is or what I'm trying to figure out there where I've got 23, 19, 17. I, I don't know. It's something with a game, but I don't know. But here's what happened. I went home and I've told the story before of where a lot of my gaming boxes got burned. And I won't go into that stuff, but I peeked into this and I found a lot of my old user manuals and notes from gaming. So it's obviously not all of them. But when I looked at the top one, I was like, I've got to share this with YouTube because this is just, I don't know how long this is going to take, but I'm just super excited about just going down the history's path and having like a ton of stories. There's a ton of them in here. We may not get through it all. This may be like a two-parter, but uh, I mean, if you want to order Pizza Hut, I got this. We got a, we got a map. Is this a map of Kentucky? Ah, it's a map of southeastern Kentucky, you know? So this is the ye old hunting map. If you want to go hunting and fishing down that way. Uh, let's see, what year was this one created? Because this is, this is old, old. Because this, this Pizza Hut that's advertised wasn't even around. This bank does not even exist anymore. It says locally owned and operated since 1905. Not anymore. It got bought out. I really... I mean, yeah, and who uses maps anymore? That's how ancient this is. There's got to be a print date, but I'm not going to waste too much time on this because, uh, yeah, there's so many of these things that just don't exist. 1995. Maybe. Maybe 1995. Yeah, publisher's note. This was printed in 1995 in Cincinnati, Ohio. All right, so we're off to a great start. All right, the top, oh my God. <laughs> I just saw what was after this. Seriously, I opened this up and I saw this top instruction booklet and I stopped. And you may be able to tell what system it's from just by the shape of this. This is freaking NCAA basketball on the Super Nintendo. Let me tell you how nerdy I got with this game. I mean, this. I feel like I, I'm like an elementary teacher. And on page three, you know, and I've got to like slowly bring it across here. You know, this game, I would play this and uh, I would take pieces of notebook paper and I would cut out. My dad would bring home all these tip off like little books from gas stations and stuff. And I would take the players that were in the game and I would assign them different players from the newspaper or then little books he brought home. And I would make my own like my own lineup and like put their stats and stuff next to it. I mean, you want to know how old this game is. I don't even know if you all could see like some of the conferences, but it's got like ACC, the big East, the big eight, the SWC. I mean, this game, I put a lot of time into it. I remember one night I got so tore up playing this game. I'd made it to the tournament, which I think if you played the season, you made it to the tournament. But uh, I made it there. Uh, Georgia Tech was overrated. They had a guy on the team. I think his name was Thurber. And he just could shoot threes like nobody's business. And it made this awful, like when you tried to slap the ball away. Um, the, but uh, I made it to the tournament. And I was like sweating. And I like walked into the kitchen. My dad's like, are you okay? And I was like, I got two games. I got two games. And of course, he's like, what in the heck are you even talking about? And, uh, and, and, and I'm like telling him what's going on. He's like, oh, it's just a game. And then the next breath, he's yelling at like Monday Night Football or something. All right, what else do we got in here? There are so many things in here. Holy, this game. Wow, this one might get demonetized. Uh, virtual Resort Spring Break on the PC. Uh, at one time when I was super skinny, I may have looked like that. I used to wear those shirts all the time. I'm not going to say the name because that will totally get demonetized. But uh, this game, I put a lot of hours into it. And, and it, it was just one of those silly games, you know, uh, that you uh, built a spring break resort. 
And for some reason, I remember going to Walmart and, and buying this and thinking it was a good idea. And it was hilarious. You know, you obviously wanted your guests to be happy and do stuff and get drunk and all that. And uh, I mean, yeah, that's actually this one in the bottom. The one that's on the cover now, he looks more like my nephew than me. So uh, I don't know. That's that's funny. That's the, that's the extreme we're going here. We're going from NCAA basketball, a classic, wholesome game, to Spring Break Virtual Resort, which I think I got this after Sim Golf because I thought it was kind of the same. But I know my mom walked in. She was like, why is all those girls in bikinis? And I'm like, well, why aren't they in bikinis? Oh, man. Oh, man. This is not the original OG, but this is Harvest Moon 64. Spent many hours on this. Some of you asked me to play this on the uh, on 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 YouTube, and there's just no way because this one took even longer than the Super Nintendo one. I uh, I put many hours into this. My best friend would come up and stay the night, and he would literally, and sometimes his brother would sit there and just watch me uh, play this game. And uh, that was one of two games where we did something like that. The other, his brother would come up and we'd play Secret of Mana and have the, the adapter where all three of us could play and stuff. But uh, use the hammer to break up rocks or throw them in the well. It takes six blows from the basic hammer to break a boulder. I have played so much Harvest Moon in my life and just seeing this, just like, it makes me smile. I don't, I don't know why. It's like, I was just that nerdy guy. Now, the back of it kind of looks a little uh, obtuse, but uh, we'll just let that go. Oh, man. Talk about another game I spent. <laughs> Woo! Sim City. This is Dr. Wright's Urban Planning Guide. Let me tell you about this. Well, we got Dr. Wright's personal facts on the back. If you've never seen this or played this game, uh, the addiction started here because I played this one before I played the PC version. His IQ is 1,000. His height is three inches. He went to Mario State University where he had a Bachelor of Arts, a Master's of Arts, a PhD, a DDS, an NES, and an honorary profession professorship of deep thinking. His hobbies include F-Zero racing, skydiving with pilot wings, and Yoshi riding. This guy's got it all done. His past titles was the National Traffic Coordinator, the President of the Society for the Preservation of Antique Plumbing. Nice. Uh, what's so funny about this is all through this instruction book, this is actually a pretty thick, this has 83 pages in it. This is the difference between instruction books back then and like the crap that they give you now is there's a lot about how to like, do stuff in these instruction booklets and you actually learn how to play the game because it kind of like it inspired you to start something like like it's got the right files on how to build towers and how to get them to start and stuff you know you didn't need nintendo power for everything um one of the funniest parts is like these pictures right here and i'll try to get this as close as i can so you all could see it it's probably not going to be in focus but you see the stage four capital there and it's got like that beginner island the tutorial one uh, people would try to copy that. And when it come to copying, I went over to my buddies and we were trying to figure a way to rip off the system. And I probably could find the picture here. There is one somewhere in this book. Oh, here's something you really don't see every day. It has every land mass that you could put in the game, the landforms, uh, all the way through. So, I mean, you could like look at them and be like, boom, I want number 77. I used, there was one I really liked a long time ago and I always picked that one to build on and it just never worked. But what I was getting to is there was a picture in here and it may be on the, uh, the highest thing where it shows like the city. I have to find it now. Now, now I'm stuck on this. But what we did is we went to my, yes, here it is, on the Megalopolis Stage 6 page. Right here, this picture. It wasn't like CSI. I couldn't go, like, image enhance, and it got better. I went over to my buddy's house, and his dad was, like, a filmographer and stuff. 
We literally set this instruction book down on the floor. His dad put a camera right above it and zoomed in, and we projected this map on the ceiling or on the wall or something just so we could try to copy this to get a megalopolis. It never worked. All right, what do we have here? I've got... I have no idea. It's red and blue codes written for a game. I couldn't tell you what or for what game. It could be something I rented. Here's my Tasmanian Devil uh, notepad that I wrote a whole bunch of codes on. Uh, again, if you could figure out... Look at, look at that horrible password. Like, who does that to kids? That you had to write all of that down. That's just awful. Here is, oh my God. You all want to know what's wrong with me? This is the best thing ever. This has got to be from King Griffey Jr. Baseball. It is, because Sandy Falcon, John Tatum, Muscle McPhee was barely Barry Bonds, and Bull Higgins uh, was the lineup. I literally kept, I don't know why I've got it all marked out. I literally kept my own box score uh, going down the line for the players. And uh, you can see I won it. So I've got my record up there, the 1995 champions, 25 and one, or 21 and five. And it, what is it, an 803, 808. Like, I'm so weird. Like, I still, you can see at the bottom, I figured out their stats. Their batting averages and everything. There it goes. It finally clicked in. Look at that. This is me. I don't know. And I know that why I marked them out is because I was copying them over back then to another book where I kept multiple seasons because there was no dynasty. You could trade and stuff, but it started over. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm still this way. What is this? I know what this is. Just looking at one of the bosses. This is a map that come with the... This had to be, what was it, Illusion of Gaia? The world map for that. And on the back, it's got the entire enemy list. Now, the only thing that ever got away from me in this game was I never got all the orbs. And that made me mad because I put a lot of work into this. I even bought the super big box that had the t-shirt in it. And my mom wore the t-shirt. She didn't know what it was, but she thought it was a great t-shirt. Uh, of everything, this is probably my most unused instruction booklet. Uh, I keep looking at the time, but uh, I, you know what? I'm going to keep going. Uh, it's the original Pokemon instruction booklet for the Game Boy. I don't remember if I had red or blue, and I know you're all going to be like, oh my God. But I literally, it was that time where you change as a man where... I went to the store because I was excited. My cousin and my friends were all talking about Pokemon. And I was like, oh, I want to go to the, I'm going to go buy Pokemon. And I literally brought it home. I went with my mom. She bought it. I brought it home. We started, I started playing it. And I was like, oh, this is really good. And then it was like, the next day I went to school or whatever, or to the pool, if it was the summer and girls exist. And like, I never played it again. And I literally like told you all that when we did uh, the summer game blitz not too long ago that I got Pokemon, but I never played it. And we played it a little on stream and that was the only experience I had with it. This, this, this book, I'm sure I read through it because I was a big nerd. This is another one uh, that's got 59 pages in it that they don't make them like that anymore. Oh, here's another game. We have, there are so many instructions. We're not gonna be able to get through all these. This is probably gonna be a two-parter. This is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. I, this is awesome. Now I played the wazoo out of this one because uh, this game was good and I would play it when my family was driving everywhere. This is one of those games that's good memories for me because it was before my parents divorced and everything and it just, you have those good memories back then for all that. And I know this game has been remade and stuff, but you just, you can't, you can't beat the original, the OG of what you've got. So, uh, you know, speaking of OGs, another game that I wasted a lot of childhood time with, with my neighbors, freaking GoldenEye. 
this is the game that made you a man. You you shot the enemies to the point. And look at this stud muffin right at the start. Pierce Brosnan, eat your heart out. Right there he is. You know, I mean, they, they don't make them like that anymore. Daniel Craig is just all action. But Brosnan, it was the story that brought you. It brought you in for the story. Look at that. Full color pictures because we don't want to give you anything else about the game because all we did was copy the movie levels. Um, yeah, I mean... You just you couldn't beat this game. It was amazing, and from what I remember, it had really good skyboxes. And for you all who've been following the stream, you know I'm a big fan of skyboxes in video games. All right, we'll do. Oh, <laughs> we'll do these. We'll do a twofer on this one. We'll do a twofer. We've got WCW Mayhem. And all the pictures on the back are even better. We've got WCW versus NWO World Tour on the N64. Uh, these are both on the N64. I think I bought them both. But <laughs> I'm going to cover up one of the pictures. So you can see we've got Sting on both of them. Because, you know, you got to sell uh, Crow Sting. But the best picture in the world is this one. Where you got the total package Lex Luger. He may have been the narcissist then. But look at that. You, you, you know, you just got to... I'm I'm having way too much fun just going through this. Oh my god, look at these pictures. You cannot beat there's the big show. Way back when he was Paul Riot. Um I think in one of these it had uh was Alex Wright in one of these? I it's been so long since I played it. The Man of a Thousand Holds, we got him in there. I mean, yeah, it's just a lot of pictures. And, you know, it's just like these instruction booklets were like, try to go figure out the moves. You'll, you may figure them out. You may not. Super graphics in this one. Affiliation. NWO Wolfpack. I mean, great games at the time. But uh, if you tried to play them nowadays, you would just, uh, no, they would, they would probably burn your eyes. All right, here's a game that one of my friends and I skipped school. To come home and play we put it on the hardest difficulty i know that sounds familiar and we tried a thousand and one times to beat it with scotland of all the worst team in the game we said we're gonna beat this with scotland and we eventually did and it's world cup 98 we would literally skip school come home and play this and uh I think McCoist, who's an announcer now, was on that team, and there was one other dude, and literally we finally once beat it and then swore never to play the game again. And then, you know, you've seen my addiction with FIFA. Oh, here we go. Talk about great instruction booklets. It is that Illusion of Gaia instruction booklet. The Explore Handbook. This thing is 83 pages. And it goes through everything as well. Warning, don't turn the page until you've read this message. The information, tips, and techniques described in the following pages may reduce the challenge of the illusion of Gaia, or Gaia, whatever you want to say. The strategy general <laughs> recommends that you attempt to solve puzzles and work through areas of the game on your own before turning to these pages for help. Once you've turned the page, you will lose your innocence. You will lose your innocence. Look at that. Have you ever had a... <laughs> That's what's wrong with me now. My God, I turned the page. I've lost my... In innocence gone. Innocence ruined. Gone. All of it. All right. These two kind of... Oh, my... I think this is what we'll end this on right here is these, and then we'll break through the next batch for the next one. So so the first one we have is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I super enjoyed this game. It is probably one of my favorite Zelda games. This has actually got a, this is a calendar. I have a 1999 Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time calendar, which has valuable tips inside. I did not even know I need this. I'm sure that this calendar will be accurate again at some point in history. 
I don't know when. Link can control the water level within the water temple by calling forth the magic of the Orcarina or Ocarina of Time when standing directly in front of a Triforce emblem. False. Nobody controls the water temple. It's the worst level in any Zelda game. Oh, man. You got Tomboy. Tomboy Zelda going on there. Oh, yeah. She's too swole to control. And, of course, we got the instruction booklet that goes with that. Uh, Zelda games, I don't think... Besides the first one, I would read the opening story, which you all can't see that. I, I, I can barely see that. I'd have to put on my... Blue blocker sunglasses. Here's old Lon Lon Ranch. I know some of you have probably had good times and memories in this game. Uh, that's it's it's just freaking amazing. But uh, I would read the story, then immediately back. I know how to play these games. I'm gonna go play these games, and I would. Um, I love the part where they put notes. Did any of you ever write notes in the back of your instruction booklet, or write it on little Tasmanian devil things like me? All right, here's the last one we'll look at on this episode. And then next week on Saturdays with SKS, we will totally go through the rest of this box. There is probably a two-inch stack of instruction booklets still remaining in here. And posters and everything. But this one is probably my most prized possession. Uh, it's been through a lot. And... Uh, I've probably read this a thousand times as a kid and unfortunately or maybe this is just the innocence of a kid i've written in this this is the nes instruction booklet for the legend of zelda the og i had the gold one it actually is out in my garage right now um and i may do that as a future episode of sks uh saturdays with sks is actually go through that box because I've bought a lot of games and thrown them in that box and stored them at my mom's and I brought it home and I need to, I need to find a good storage system for those old systems so I can put them up and keep them safe. Cause right now it's just in an old oil box and that's not good. I love that this, the, the, the first thing, and I hope this focuses in this is on page five hints on how to destroy Ganon. You know what? Screw how to play the game. Here's just how you beat the bad guy. That is, we need that. That is right up there with the official seal of Nintendo. I mean, now the reason why I wrote in this is because if you all have ever played this game, you know that you got to have this map memorized. I actually went in and the map on the front, and I'll try to get this to focus. It may not with the blur. But I wrote where all the levels were in the first quest and drew random triangles. Why? Who knows? But I would sit there and stare at this and try to redraw the map. And eventually I just wrote on it. I loved, 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 loved this game. This game probably, pretty much probably hooked me more than Mario on video games which has led to this channel and everything else that's going on in my life um just just so much i mean you just you flip through here and there's just like a whole story of this and it just it captured your imaginations that you couldn't wait until you you went and played the game and uh it just and then the, obviously the 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 items you can't you can't beat that. And then of course, yeah, everybody always talks about the weird names of the enemies and stuff. Those are in here too. Um, I used to get my brother. I would draw out all the, the all the weapons and stuff, and he would go hide them in my yard. And we would go outside and play, and I would try to find them and go do the levels and stuff. And then my dad, of course, you know, he would see us out there playing, and he'd be like, "Oh, where's the sword? It's over there." And here he comes through with the weed eater. You know, it's like, "Oh, no magical sword for you." You know, but uh, but yeah, if you ever want to know all the silly names, they're in here. You got P Hat down there and all the Octorok and Tech Tight. There it goes. So, uh, yeah, just uh, weird names for all this. Like I said, I'm trying to do the best I can with the focus, but uh, this uh, 
Yeah, then it gets real serious. You jump down here, and uh, and now a fight to death with Ganon. And that's got a big question mark. I think he may be the only one. I don't think they show him in the instruction book. So, like, it was a big mystery. Let me let me double check here. Yeah, I think they show every enemies, or every enemy. Excuse me. How does how does language work? Um except him and it's a big deal you know because you just you don't know and then here's the map to get to level two this is all they give you at the end so yeah um a lot of history in this this it's got a big piece of tape across it and everything here um yeah a lot of memories with this a lot of memories all right, I think that'll do it. Just want to show you all the stack of just what we went through today. And we got probably the same amount. And this may be this may be totally boring for you all, but for me it is like going down I you know what? I I it's just it's my childhood. It really is. It is my childhood and there's stuff even deeper in here that have stories, but we'll we'll talk about them next week on Saturdays with SKS. I hope you all enjoy this. Like I said, I want to start vlogging some more, and I know I've got this camera here. It's it's just it's a webcam that I use when I stream. I've just put it down here, and I'm talking to it. So uh, it's all I have right now, uh, and it's what we're going to work with. And like I said, weird colors in the background. Yeah, it's professionalism at its finest, and that's what we're going for. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this. I will see you all next week on Saturdays with SKS where we do part two, more instruction booklets and more stories from SKS's childhood. Y'all have a great night. God bless. See you all next time.